Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about the recently failing, always putting their foot in their mouths Star Wars franchise. Ever since Disney took over Star Wars back in 2012, the series has seen mixed success to say the least. The house the mouse built started their continuation of the Star Wars franchise pretty strong too, with two very big hits that also received mostly positive reviews in the beginning. I'm of course talking about 2015's The Force Awakens and the following year's Rogue One films. But after after that, things started to go downhill real fast. 2017's The Last Jedi proved to be a turning point for the series because although it still made loads of money, it was very poorly received by the public and fans. Thanks a lot, Ryan Johnson. Then the next year saw the first Star Wars movie to ever lose money at the box office. That of course happened in May 2018 when Solo, a Star Wars story came out. It received mixed to negative reviews and was also plagued with production issues, including the firing of its directors and the reshooting of most of the project afterwards. Then after Star Wars took a much needed break, a year and a half later in December 2019, The Rise of Skywalker came out and flopped hard. And believe it or not, but it was so poorly received it made people think Solo and The Last Jedi weren't in fact that bad. The only shining beacon of hope recently in the Star Wars universe was their first series called The Mandalorian, which was well liked and received by most and many. But Disney making Star Wars into good TV shows appears to have been a bit of a fluke since the recent announcement and the new story for today's video talks about the next Star Wars series, and the details have many of us a wee bit worried. This week, it was revealed that a new female-centered Star Wars show is in the works now, and although female leads and lady-led projects aren't necessarily a kiss of death, but in current year and the way they have been pitched as of late, well, it's mostly just feminist-filled social justice warrior-influenced baloney and propaganda that's also filled with pro-girl and anti-male stuff that's just plain cringe and hard to watch. And this new female-centered Star Wars show also has a slew of ladies leading the project as well. And you'll never believe what they're saying in interviews. We're going to get to that clip later. And also, I found it a bit shocking when it was revealed that the head of this new show had worked for someone pretty nefarious before. We're going to go over all these juicy details today and more. But first, let's take a quick 30 seconds to hear from our sponsors. In the year 2020, it's so important to keep your body healthy, especially with everything going on in the world today. And I'm here to tell you that collagen may be the closest thing we will ever get to a real fountain of youth like material. The older you are, in fact, the more likely it's caught your attention and for good reason. Many health experts now agree that consuming collagen is as crucial as it gets to renew and revitalize how you look and feel. So if you want a healthy, safe, effective option to keep your body in good shape, visit my page at healthwithnobs.com and purchase the only collagen on the market that I personally trust. That's healthwithnobs.com. Com. Great, now let's get back to this woke-as-hell-looking, all-female-centered Star Wars series. An article from Variety has some introductory details. It's called, Star Wars Series from Russian Doll Co-Creator Leslie Headland in the Works at Disney Plus Exclusive. Okay, well, I don't know much about that Russian Doll series, other than it's another female-led one, and it's about some kind of time loop thing. Kind of like a lady reboot of Groundhog's Day. A story which sounds like whatever, but what's most troubling here is that the co-creator mentioned here, and this new leader behind the Star Wars Lady Reboot show. Her name is Leslie Headland, and she not only spells her name funny and pretty pretentious, but also, word around the water cooler is, she used to work at Miramax, and even, she was formerly an assistant to a very notorious and disgraced producer there. You probably already know who I'm talking about. I'm of course talking about the recently convicted female abuser named Harvey W. This chick Leslie used to work for him and with him intimately, if that means anything to you. I doubt she was his type, but it is very interesting to know nonetheless, especially considering this far-left SJW angle, which goes right in line with Harvey's liberal politics. Now, with all that said, let's read on into this article more now and see what we have in store for ourselves. A new Star Wars series is in the works at Disney+. Plus. Variety has learned from sources. The series hails from Leslie Headland, the co-creator, showrunner, and executive producer of the critically acclaimed Netflix series Russian Doll. Details of the exact plot of the series are being kept under wraps, but sources say it will be a female-centric series that takes place in a different part of the Star Wars timeline than other projects. Headland is said to be attached to write and serve as showrunner on the series, with the show currently staffing. Reps for Disney and Headland did not immediately respond to Variety's request for comment. Headland also directed multiple episodes of Russian Doll. The show was nominated for 13 Emmy Awards for its first season, ultimately winning three. Headland began her career writing and directing the Seven Deadly Plays series, which includes Bachelorette and Assistants. 
Well, well, well. I guess the Force is certainly female, like how Star Wars executive Kathleen Kennedy has boasted for years. They're certainly delivering on that promise, too, since the greater majority of new Star Wars projects have all been female-led. The new trilogy featured the Mary Sue lead named Rey, and then the second Disney Star Wars movie, Rogue One, had a female lead, too, going by the name of No One Really Remembers or Cares. Then there's this new show they're talking about now, which is promising to be female-centered as well. So I have to ask, at what point is this all-girl pro feminist stuff going to end? I mean, it's already not fair, as they would put it. It's not even or balanced. Females are dominating Disney Star Wars projects overwhelmingly. But I guess it's never enough when you're dealing with SJWs like this. And in case you are not sure or curious about how far left and pro-social justice this new show and its creator and writer are going to be, well, let's next take a look at the video of this pro Miramax Leslie Headland chick and see what she has to say about things on camera. Because what she's about to say in this video clip is rather shocking. Go ahead and take a look for yourself. I just say that, like, I, I think white women need to kind of step up their game, to be quite honest. Like, <laughs> sorry, but I'm calling, I'm calling out. Like, <laughs> um, you really do. Because, like, you know, there's, like, we can, I couldn't agree more with everything that, that these brilliant women are saying. But, like, I, I'm also seeing the silent killer, which is a lot of white women at the top who are kind of reinforcing a lot of old ideas. Wowzers really doesn't get more woke than attacking white people directly. And white women specifically seem to be getting put on blast here. But why? This person appears to be that demographic herself. So I guess this is sort of her self-flagellating and virtue signaling and showing that she's woke. Leslie's hating on her own people in order to virtue signal and show the progressives she is one of the good ones. But she isn't though. Leslie has barely spoken here, but she already appears to be very hateful and anti-white, which means she's clearly been fed and is swallowing up all the stark anti-American rhetoric here on the left-wing side, a good amount of which is coming out of their home area there in Hollywood, California. Also, by the way, in addition to being a self-hating white woman, Leslie here is also exposing the underlying hatred she has for her wife, Rebecca Henderson. Not to get too personal and bring family into this too much, but it is rather rather odd that someone who is anti-white women like this, like Leslie, well, she's also one of them herself, and even she's married to one as well. Shouldn't be too surprising though since this is another trend we've seen time and time again. Many starkly anti-white activists and pro-SJWs in fact are like this. They bash white people day and night, but then they end up being married to us and having their kids with us in the end. Another example of this on the internet is MTV Decoded's Francesca Ramsey. She was like this. She used to bash whites in videos on YouTube every day of the week. And at the same time, she has had a white husband for years, which really makes you think. And it really reminds me a lot of this new Star Wars showmaker, Leslie, and how she hates herself and the type of person her wife is too. I think a lot of it, you know, to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I'll just speak from my own personal experience, it's just like, I wasn't sure how to be an ally. I wasn't sure what type, I got so caught up in like what kind of terminology I was supposed to be using and being politically correct. And, and, and so uh, as I started to to rise in television, I started to just get more blunt and just start saying, like, I would like a black writer. Jesus, that's a scary face right there. Anyway, what she's saying here is silly as hell and all based on identity politics. Besides a few specific niche situations, there's very little cause to be demanding a black writer. What you should be looking for is a good writer or one who fits in with the style and genre of the project you've created. Sure, that might actually warrant asking for a black writer at some point. Like if, say, you were making a black legend show or something about some sort of black experience or a period piece during the civil rights movement or something. But good writers can portray that too, even if they're not that specific identity. And since writers are behind the scenes type jobs that don't usually get seen by the viewers much, well, they can really be whatever background and look they happen to be, at least according to normal same people like us who hire workers based on their skills and them fitting within a project. This is preferable over just trying to get someone who's black so you can virtue signal, which seems to be the way this new Star Wars producer and writer is going. And I understand in some weird messed up way, she kind of thinks she's helping, but she's actually not. She's doing the opposite and she's being very racist and making relations in this country much worse. This kind of attack and mindset stokes the fires of racism in our country and turns people against each other and makes us focus more on our background than we really should or need to be. And that's mostly because SJWs like this are all about their backgrounds and identities because they have nothing else interesting or worthwhile to consider about them. So they just just have to focus on their skin color and stuff they were born with. I guess if I said diverse, no, don't you know, you you get you get well, white is diverse, which is something somebody said to me, and I was like, wow. wow. Um, 
<laughs> uh, I was like, it's not cool. But um, but but to really, you know, I, I reached out to my, you know, um, uh, the, the women that I respect who are who are, are not white. Uh, Yikes, lady. Can you get any more blatantly anti-white and racist? Not only did she just say the women she respects are not white, like her wife, by the way, but also she even went so far as to say white people are not diverse. And I actually love that she said this because it confirms a suspicion and premise we've been playing with here for a long while. Basically, this proves that when SJWs say diverse or diversity, they really just mean no white people. Never mind the fact that whites can be very diverse, and we are, and we're also a minority in the planet's greater scheme and population and makeup. And in addition, back to the first point, we are very diverse. There are many different types of white people across the globe. There's American whites, there's the French, South Africans, Australians, New Zealanders. There's even whites as minorities in other places known to have other races, usually. Like how there are whites in Mexico, Argentina, and other parts of South America. There are Russian whites, Germans, Scandinavians, Middle Easterns. We're all over the place. But all that doesn't seem to matter because as JWs like this new Star Wars lady, Leslie, they don't actually mean to use the word diverse the way it actually means in the dictionary and how it's intended. Really, again, when they say diverse, they mean no whites. So in a way, it's actually good to hear a lefty like this just say it outright, but it's also a very bad and racist mindset and a terrible look for these ladies who are supposed to be promoting a new Disney Plus show. Just imagine if we came out on a press tour promoting a new movie or something and the first thing we get quoted saying on video is, we don't respect brown people and they can't be working on our project in any capacity. Surely that would damn us and get us called racist and forever doom this project as something no one will want to watch and possibly could even get it canceled. But in this situation, that's not going to happen. In fact, the SJWs and Disney are cheering this kind of racism on. What should I say? What what lang how what language should I use? You know, and and I think it's worth it if you're in a position of um, hiring power or or uh, green lighting power to like reach out to people that are not like like you and say, what can I do to be an ally? And and how can I how can I support um, writers of color and um, um, LG, LGBTQ and disabled writers? Like, what can I do? Ah, the whole reaching out to people who aren't like you premise. A noble thought on the surface, but again, we know this means something different than what the words and phrase come together to actually say. This lady doesn't actually mean she wants to embrace people who are not like her because if it came time to hire, say, a man or someone that's straight or dare they come across the resume of a conservative leaning person, do you really think these lefties would consider opening up to these other kinds of people that aren't like them? Of course not, because they don't mean they want different people or different mindsets. Really, they just want people who are not white like them. Straight people are still placed below alphabets too, and of course, different political thoughts is not acceptable at all, especially in Hollywood. No way they would go for that kind of difference, because really, they want people who all think the same as them. They want people who believe in the same liberal, progressive, SJW ways, just like everyone else on the left. The only difference really that they'll accept is they want people who aren't white. And um, what kind of uh, vocabulary should I be using? Because I think it's just easier. I just see it in the room. Like I just see them kind of go like, it's just easier. Like the guy at the top's louder. It's it's harder to say like, I think this should be a black writer. I think this should be an Asian American actor. Now I could be fair here. Deciding the race and look of an actor is much more justifiable. Certainly these are performers who you actually see at the forefront front of these products. So if one character say happens to be from Japan and they're a ninja or something, well, then it makes sense to tell the casting director you want a fit, action-ready Asian male for the role. But where this goes wrong is, again, the whole anti-white thing. If the role isn't gender or racially specific, racist SJWs like this one will surely make them minority women or alphabet male minorities or something or the other. Again, anything but straights and whites because they're racist as hell. Really, I find it a lot as well with as, as a queer woman, like with uh, gay characters, whether they be gay men or uh, gay women, where I'm saying like, that's not a gay person. Like, <laughs> sorry, like this is not a gay person. Like we're not representing that in in this storyline like it like because this writer's gay she speaks for all gay people now rather presumptuous i must say and how come she can cross aisles and speak for gay men who obviously have had very different experiences with things i of course highly doubt she would allow a gay man to speak for her and her lesbian wife because i guess she abides by the old liberal adage do as i say not as i do and wow wrapping this video up now and it's truly a masterclass in how to put out bad pr ahead of a new tv show especially for a 
Star Wars TV show, which used to be a franchise that appealed to all demographics. Now it's been captured and held hostage and taken over by these whamons and the SJWs. And the alphabet people Disney has chosen to hire, including this awfully racist Leslie Lady, who likely learned how to be a sexist and a bigot and how to belittle people from her former boss at Miramax, who is now in jail for all his terrible crimes. What do you guys think? Is this the kind of leader and interview that gets you excited about a new Star Wars series? Or is Leslie ruining this project already and destroying the hype and people's interest in it before it could even get off the ground? Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you all next time.